G'day guys, my name's Dylan Dance. I'm an astrophysicist from Australia. I'm a PhD candidate in astrophysics at Swinburne University. And today we're gonna watch a movie all about astrophysicists. So right up my alley. Do me a favor guys, like the video. It helps the YouTube algorithm. It's gonna help me make science that little bit cooler. Let's get into it. <laughs> I love that it's starting with coffee because let's be honest, genius is 1% inspiration, 99% coffee. Hey, Carl Sagan, that's promising. So whoever wrote this is clearly a bit of an astro lover. So it's a good, uh, it's a good start. Really likely will hit. This sounds very, very exciting. Exploding stars, like stars actually explode the entire planet. Okay, well, as it's damaging, will it hit this one house in particular that's right on the coast of New Jersey? It's my ex-wife's house I needed to be hit. I'm cursed. But unfortunately, there was an immediate backlash that quickly became a meme. Oh, oh, Jesus. It's a comedy, but when a comedy hits too close to home, it becomes very depressing. Dr. Mindy, on the other hand, had some very high favorables. Fit or A-I-L-F, which means astronomer I like to fuck. Oh. I don't see what that has to do with anything, do you? Come into a fork in the road, which way to go, just follow the line. That looks like Keck. I can't tell which telescope. It looks like Subaru, not the car, the telescope. Can you see that giant laser coming out of the telescope? Well, that is actually a giant death beam for when aliens come. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm totally kidding. That is a sodium dye laser. And what it actually does is charge up a layer of sodium atoms left by vaporized shooting stars in the atmosphere about 60 miles above the surface and shooting stars are, of course, meteors, if you didn't know. So when the laser hits these sodium atoms, they basically light up and they create what serves as like an artificial star or what's called a laser guide star in the business. You probably all know that starlight actually twinkles and that's from the Earth's atmosphere. And so with this laser and the adaptive optics on the ground, which is like this deformable mirror, which can change, <laughs> it looked weird, which can change shape 2000 times per second, you can take the twinkle out of these stars and get like these really incredible images. So that's what that's all about. That twinkling distorts the images. So you really need one of these death beams on your telescope. How big we talking? We clocked it in around five to 10 kilometers wide. Okay, about that's big. So the one that killed the dinosaurs, we think was about 10 kilometers. That was an asteroid. So yeah, this thing would obviously kill us all. Planet killer, I think they like uh, to call that's it. That's a big boy. That is a big boy. Uh, this is just some sort of alternate reality, right? Say something. I gotta go get high. <laughs> Charge an arm and a leg for this stuff. A ten of piece ought to do it. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Grab a water. Thank you. I, I've got yeah. Kate as well. Oh, perfect. The hell? Surely all that stuff's free. They're in the White House. Where do I pay for these? It's free. <laughs> really? Yes, it's the White House. <laughs> wow. That's weird. That's really weird. The general. Yes. He charged us for the snacks, but they're free. Power move. Oh, gosh. Why would he do that? Why on earth would he do that? He's a force. Using Gauss's method of orbital determination and the average astrometric uncertainty of 0 0.04. So what? bored. Just tell us what, what? it is. <laughs> Seriously, stop. Story of my life. That is literally what I'm trying to do here on YouTube. I try to balance stuff, guys. I know uh, some of this stuff makes people bored if I go into too much detail. And according to NASA's computers, that object is going to hit the Pacific Ocean at 62 miles. Well, Australia's stuff. You're just telling a story. Keep it simple. No math. <laughs> but it's all math. <laughs> <laughs> uh. I mean, I have like a quarter million subscribers, honey. I'm going to use my voice to get the truth out there, right? It is called the scientific method, and it is what created the computer. What do you want to type in it? And I still can't make sense of it. He's a three-star general. Why would he charge us for free snacks? We're not the most religious here in the Mindy household, but um, maybe we, should we say amen? Let's be honest. It doesn't matter how atheist you are. At the end of your time, you're going to be on your knees praying. <laughs> you're going to hedge your bets because, you know, if there's a God out there, you better say sorry for all that naughty shit you've done. It'll be along the lines of, if you exist, <laughs> forgive me for everything I've done. All right, it looks like she's found a comet because it's got a tail. 
asteroid wouldn't have a tail. So this is pretty accurate. If you ever walk into a physics department, there's memes everywhere. <laughs> It's exactly what I'm like. It's gotta be. Look, it's gotta be. Five AU. So if you didn't know, AU stands for astronomical unit, which is a common unit in astronomy, and it's basically the average distance between the Earth and the Sun, which is about 150 million kilometers. What would Carl Sagan do? He would take it back to first principles. I don't think he would. He'd probably write a poetic book about our <laughs> doomed existence. Hi, yes, uh, Dr. Mindy. Uh, and, and no, PhD candidate Kate DiBiaschi founded. I did the orbital calculation. So that's exactly what I am. I'm a PhD candidate in astrophysics, and that's what this Kate is. I study trace gases in dead galaxies. I, uh, I haven't published in a while, so you probably haven't heard No of way. That's exactly what I do. I study dead galaxies. I'll tell you just quickly. That's crazy because there's so much you can do in astrophysics, but that's what I do. So I don't, I'm not looking specifically at trace gases in dead galaxies. I'm basically trying to identify the earliest dead galaxies in the universe. Um, so I do that theoretically with computer simulations. So we make little models of the universe. And what I'm specifically trying to do is find when the earliest massive galaxies died. Give us the distance between the comet and planet Earth. Why does the ephemeris keep getting lower and lower? Uh oh. Uh oh. It just hit him. Like it's about to hit us. So let's just quickly talk about what are the chances of this happening in reality? Because if you didn't know, there is actually a chance this could happen. A very, very slight chance, but it is still possible. Uh, there's lots of comets and asteroids whizzing around out there. And we do have systems in place like the one they've just mentioned at NASA that does monitor the solar system and all these celestial bodies. There's about 25,000 asteroids floating around out there, which sounds like a lot, but that's actually very small in terms of, you know, like how big our solar system is. However, sometimes things do come at us from the sun. And so it hides in the sunlight and you, we can't exactly spot these things. You know, if they're an asteroid, they don't have a tail as they come in from the sun. And so sometimes we don't see them until they're just about to pass us or until they've already passed us. And sometimes they come in between satellites and Earth. So like very close, but for the really big ones, it's extremely unlikely anything like this is going to happen. We would be able to see a comet well before it hits us. So I'm interested to see how long they have in this movie. So you might be asking, what the hell are we doing about this? Are we preparing? Well, actually just last month, NASA launched a mission that is directly preparing for this. So what they're trying to do is shoot a spacecraft at uh, an asteroid, right? And they're going to try and divert its path just a little bit because it's not about explosive power. It's about just slightly nudging it because that'll be enough if we hit it early enough to eventually miss us. This $330 million probe is going to hit this uh, asteroid, 150 meter wide asteroid called Dimorphos. I think it's a September next year, so that should be fun. And I think it's moving about 25,000 kilometers per hour, so this thing is just going to go, it's going to slightly nudge it off course, hopefully, and we'll see if we have a hope of surviving in the future, you know, if we have some time to prepare. Because if, unfortunately, if something, if we discover an asteroid coming at us tomorrow, a mission like that is not going to save us, and we are all stuffed. I used to watch movies like this when I was younger all the time. I used to love that movie Armageddon when I was like seven. I think I've watched it at least 50 times, and it's the most unscientific, like there's so many problems in that movie, but I still loved it. I don't care if they get science and physics wrong. Physics is hard. There's also other things we could do. We could launch like a giant spacecraft that would, you know, kind of move the asteroid or comet slowly out of the way from its gravitational pull, or we could shoot them with lasers. I like that idea. Giant death beam will turn, will turn the moon into a giant death star and just laser them. I just finished the movie. I loved it. Extremely depressing. My sort of film. Bit of a warning more than anything, I think. You know, looking at you Americans out there. So get out there, help me promote science, make it cool, and I'll catch you guys next time.